In this video, we're going to talk about section 6.2, extending off the ideas that we did in the last section. So as I state right up here at the top, in the last section, we looked at Maclaurin and Taylor polynomials, and they were used to model functions from different starting points. Remember that a Maclaurin, series, or Maclaurin uh, polynomial modeled from x being a zero, and a Taylor polynomial could model from anywhere. It seemed like it was the case, and we looked at a lot of things on the calculator, that as the n increased, the degree of the polynomial got bigger, it seemed like our approximating polynomial kind of covered the curve more and more and more. It made the approximations, as I state here, better and better and better. And one of the questions that we would have then is, well, what if n went off to infinity? If I pull up a picture that we looked at last time, we had in here our sine function being modeled by something. And we might ask the question, if instead of stopping at maybe something like a degree 7 polynomial here to model the sine, what if I went to a degree 700 polynomial, or degree 7 million polynomial, a degree 7 trillion polynomial? What if I let n keep getting larger? Would it be the case that this red thing would continue to look more and more like the blue? Or would it kind of like eventually hit like some sort of stopping point? It doesn't really get any closer. It just kind of, you know, uh, wiggles around a little bit more and these edges flail about. And it doesn't really ever capture or cover more of the blue. I mean, it's hard to know for sure. So far, it seemed again like it was possible that maybe the red thing, if you made the power continually larger, would just only ever continue to look more like the blue. Well, that's part of the question that we want to try to investigate here in Chapter 6. And we're going to have to come up with a couple definitions here to help us out. So here's at least our starting definition for today. Let's suppose that f has derivatives of all orders at a value of x0. When I say that it has derivatives of all orders, I mean, essentially, you can take as many derivatives as you want. You want to do a 10 trillionth derivative and then plug in an x0, that's okay. You can compute that. Okay? So if I have a function that's like that, then we call the series that looks like this. Notice here, I'm very intentionally putting an infinity on top. But on the inside of this series formula, you'll notice that it's going to be some very familiar bits of terminology. This is the same Taylor polynomial setup that we had before. It's just now it doesn't ever stop. So we will call this guy here the Taylor series for the function f about x0. So this is the idea in this section. What if we did replace n with an infinity? What if this was an addition problem that went on forever? Remember that what this addition problem actually looks like is something like f of x0, f prime of x0, times x minus x0 to the first, plus f double prime, that's a double prime up there, and we'll rewrite that. Double prime of x0 over 2 factorial, x minus x0 to the 2, and this just keeps going. It's just a polynomial, but if it was centered at x0, we would call it now a Taylor series because it goes on forever. We could also then define a Maclaurin series, and the only thing we would have to adjust is instead of starting at x0, we would just start at precisely 0. So as I state down here, Maclaurin and Taylor series differ from the series that we had in 5.2 through 5.6 because the terms that we have in this addition problem are not just numbers, but they have variables in them. So these are examples of what we more generally would call these kind of infinitely long polynomial looking things go by the name of a power series. So here's the definition. A power series is a series of the form c sub n times x to the n, which is equal to a c0, a c1 times an x, a 
a C2 times an X squared and kind of on and on and on and on and on forever. Notice here, X is a variable and C sub N's are constants. We have the same thing in the formula above. It's just we kind of had in these underlined red pieces, we actually had values in places of those constants because we were dealing with a very specific infinitely long polynomial looking thing. When you hear the phrase Taylor series, Taylor po or, uh, power series, Maclaurin series, you really just want to think to yourself, it's just an infinitely long polynomial thing. It's just a bunch of X's with powers and numbers in front of them. If the numbers in front are selected in precisely the, in the box above they were, then I know it can model something very specific. And I know what it models. It models the function F. But I could just kind of randomly make up a power series. And that's kind of what we have down here in example number one. Consider this power series. Again, I'm just making it up. It's just um, X to the power N. So notice here that immediately when I start to write out what these terms look like, well, the constants that are in front always appear to just be ones. So I have x to the zero, then x to the one, x to the two, x to the three, and that's just like an infinitely long polynomial thing, okay? So I'll even write this. I'll say for this series, c sub n is equal to one for all n. And I can easily go ahead and imagine that this, if it's like a super long polynomial thing, it, it kind of operates like a function, but it also kind of operates like a series. So one thing that I might notice here is actually this is a very special type of series. I can see the following. This resembles a geometric series with a being equal to one and r being equal to the value of x, right? Notice again here, this is slightly different than the geometric series form that we had in the past, but the important thing about all geometric series is that we don't necessarily have to have power n minus one, we have to have a power that begins with value zero. So if I had n starting at a one, I need an n minus one. If I have n starting at a 7, I need an n minus 7. But if n starting at a 0, I just need n itself. But this is a geometric series. And therefore I could say it converges when the absolute value of r is less than 1. And it diverges when the absolute value of my r is greater than or equal to 1. So I can kind of imagine, I can kind of view this thing as like a function. Sometimes there are X's that I can plug into it that will produce an answer, converging, and other times that there are X's I can plug in that will not produce an answer. So I can say here that, uh, not if, but how about we can view this series as a function, like maybe it's f of x equals, and this is just the formula for that series, or for, for that function, right? So I can view this as a function of x, and then I can talk about the domain of that function. I could say it would have domain, absolute values of x have to be less than one because those are the only numbers I can plug in that allow me to compute a value back. So when we say absolute value of x is less than one, that of course gives us that x's have to be somewhere between negative one and one, meaning that I would have a domain of negative one to one. If I plug those numbers into this big infinitely long polynomial thing, I get something. And so the weird thing is, is that this sort of a function, I could even imagine having a picture. Now, I can't type this function into my calculator because it goes on forever, but I could slowly start to imagine what that picture begins to look like, right? So like I could say, um, well, let's suppose I plug in the number zero. If I plug in the number zero, what do I get back? 
So if x is replaced by zeros, it looks like what I spit back is the number 1. So on the picture of my function, I know 0, 1 occurs. Okay, but what does the rest of it look like? I know that if I plug in something like 1 half, I can get a result, and I could start to plot that point. And the weird part would then be, I wonder what that curve begins to look like. Now, in this section, what we're going to specifically focus on is how do I just start by finding the domain of these functions? We're not going to be concerned about whether or not uh, or what their pictures look like, but more just their domains, right? What are the values of x I'm allowed to plug into them? And we know that the values that we'll be able to plug in are the ones that create something converging. All right, we'll start to take a look at uh, an additional uh, definition at this point, which is a way we can generalize a power series. So we'll say that a series of the form, and this is almost identical to what we just covered, but a series of this form is simply just called a power series centered at x0. It's kind of like the equivalent of how we had a Taylor series that was shifted. I can imagine a power series that's shifted as well. And so I shouldn't be surprised if I see shifts like this. Keep in mind that all this would look like is just something like c number 0 plus c number 1 times x minus x0, c number 2, x minus x0 squared, so on and so forth. Okay. Well, that concludes at least this video. And in the next video, we'll take a look at uh, an example of how we can actually start to take a look at an arbitrary function like this, one of these weird, infinitely long polynomial things, and try to determine something about when it converges, essentially like what is its domain.